Okay, so we got 2005 Volkswagen Beetle. It's two liter gas. Um, I guess, and this is a bit of a common problem on these, the main fuse box that sits up on top of the battery, the alternator wire burnt out. Um, so we got a new one. Um, so I don't believe anything bad happened to this vehicle. I did check the alternator, powered it up uh, directly. Um, it's putting out normally. I don't believe the uh, jumper this vehicle backwards or anything like that. Uh, I guess what happens is you get a little bit of corrosion underneath the wire here. Um, and there was quite a bit under there. I took a diamond file to that, cleaned it up as best as I could. Um, because anytime you see anything like this, anytime you see anything that's melted, then what that is, is that's a bad connection, that's resistance. You put more and more current through there, then the resistance gets more and more and more because it can only handle so much current, then you get heat. Uh, so wherever you get melting, that's where the resistance is, that's where your problem lies. Um, it would have been ideal to replace this whole wire or at least replace, you know, tie into a, a ways down, but you know what, that costs money. Um, the customer didn't want to go that route. Uh, so, you know, you can't really fault them. It seems to be okay. Um, you know, the copper did get warm, so it's not ideal, but it is still making a good connection in here. Um, the guy at least did opt for a new uh, fuse box. I have seen some people just take this wire and they just go directly to the battery. Um, you won't have a, a fuse for your alternator, you know, the big 110 amp, but, you know, a, a lot of vehicles don't have alternator fuses. Um, but he did go for this which is good this is at least a better way of going um, it is a little pricey but um, we are putting this over so you, you just kind of swap everything over you definitely want to take a picture so you don't it's ideal not to mix up the wires um, and then it's clear the transfer of the green fuses make sure those are good I have seen uh, some pictures online where they're uh, all melted up in there too but the other thing that I didn't notice um, until I went to go fire it up is <laughs> at least the kit that I got didn't come with the individual fuses the main fuses so I go to start the key turn the key nothing you got to transfer these over and of course the alternator one is cooked um, so we had to call them back and get them to send one thankfully they do have a bunch in stock we have um, here in town there's a, a, a European specialist they especially specialize in Volkswagens. Ah, sorry, Volkswagens. So, no problem getting one. We just gotta wait for that to show up. Um, we got this guy taped up because, the, of course, the heat melted the insulation a fair amount back. Um, but yeah, it it will hold up. Um, it will hold up well. Uh, if you get one of these, that um, you know, basically what's gonna happen is your alternator is gonna die. So you drive it. You might see the battery light if you. If you notice that then eventually it just dies on you and won't start and you boost it and it starts but as soon as you take the booster off um, it dies uh, don't just throw an alternator at it make sure you pop this open and check that it normally it has a cover in this case we have to transfer this one over it's less than ideal but whatever it'll be fine it's just plastic um, so don't always just throw an alternator at these guys make sure that that's not melted and just because that's melted does not necessarily mean that alternator is bad. Okay, so we got our new fuse in. Uh, as you can see, we have the amperage rating on the one side and uh, M and whatever that is on the other side. Um, amperage rating goes closest to the voltage supply. Um, and then the other markings go to the actual device. So we just slip that guy Come on. Yeah, that'll go down with a nut, I think. Hmm. Why are you doing that? Let me use the other hand. Okay, so I had to push it down with this and then that went down. So um, they have these washers and a nut. We'll give that a little tighten in a second. Then we'll just hook this guy up, hook this back up, this end here back up to the post. We'll run it and make sure it's charging. Okay, so that's all hooked up. Um, 
course we'll tuck it away uh, once we're all good and happy with everything. Uh, let's fire it up. Off from the side. <coughs> oh, she hot. And yeah, we don't have a voltage display on there. That's too bad. So we'll grab a multimeter. There we go, she's running. Um, Volkswagens, I always like to pull the windows down. They do like to lock. Uh, and you don't want these things to lock with the keys inside. They're not the easiest to break into. Okay, so let me get a meter. Um, as it sits though, we see there's no um, battery light on the dash. So let me get a meter and make sure she's charging. Okay, so if we look at our booster pack, um, with the booster off, it is showing that it's at 13.5, 13.6. Um, I don't always trust that display on the booster pack. Um, that thing's been around for a long time. It's been used a lot. It's beat up, all that stuff. Um, I definitely want to use something a little bit better. Let's see if I can't get... Uh-oh. Uh ain't liking that. Hmm. That was getting warm. Oh, is she hot? Uh-oh. Hmm. Hmm. More to the story. It was already smoking. Maybe our alternator is cooked. Hmm. I'm gonna have to get some meters again. Okay, so if you can see on the thermal imager, um, she's hot. That's not good. Well, why? We'll have to check to see if there is still uh, a big voltage drop um, as in if there's still a lot of resistance um, so what I'd like to do for that um, because I don't want this thing to run for very long um, what I'd like to do is I'll put a um, on my multimeter I'll get a clamp around battery positive uh, and then I'll get another clamp they'll be fixed to say somewhere around here and we'll just check to see if there's a voltage drop from here to there uh, cause that's still not making good connection or it's got way too much current going through there for that to handle hmm well let's find out what it is okay so to start off with I'm just using my multimeter and the high amp clamp uh, just gonna see what's flowing out of there um, I don't have it zeroed but the setting that we're on is uh, one, one millivolt is an amp um, so we don't have to worry about two. We'll just see what it says when it's running And then we'll shut it right off Because it's still getting warm I'll get you close by so you can see Okay, keys on That's only 40 amps. That shouldn't be that much, not to make it that warm. Unless if it's still a, a horrible connection. Come on. <clears throat> I gotta charge this thing. So I think we were at 140 before. I don't know if that's been going enough. For that to cool down enough or if this has been going enough to for that to warm up uh, okay I think I can run it long enough just to do a quick um, voltage drop measurement with my uh, multimeter and we'll keep this going hopefully the battery lasts and we'll see what that says okay so we'll start this again and we'll go quickly okay running I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Uh, 50 millivolts, that's still a lot. That one's like 20. I'd like to see less than 50 millivolts. Um, 
that still getting hotter? Yep. If you can see that, yeah, she's still getting hot. Uh, I'm gonna have to try and take that off and see if I can find out what's wrong. So I do believe our issue lies with the copper, the quality of the copper um, and the, the terminal here. I think that's their main issue. Um, just for grins and giggles, I'll pull this nut off and I'll clean up the threads there, see if that's the issue. Um, but I don't really think that is. So, uh, but either way, let me, I'm gonna bend this, pull the thing right off. There's a little tab right there that holds the nut. I'm gonna bend that back so they can remove the nut. Um, maybe even put a whole new nut there and uh, um, see if that's any better and then clean the, the surface underneath here. But I do think it's the quality of the copper um, for this main cable. I think it's just oxidized too much. But that takes a bit to change. So before we go that route, let's see if we can replace that nut. So if you're a small guy like us, um, and you get something like this, don't just throw this away. Um, all the nuts that are on here, those are really good nuts. They come in handy when you drop stuff or in a case like this you need things. Um, don't throw them away. So let's pull that off. Uh, I should probably remove this. Let's disconnect this from power so we don't accidentally short anything. over there. Okay, so we'll pull that guy off. And I forgot my pliers. Um, yeah, I definitely think that's copper. I think that's the copper that's the issue, but I will pull this off and uh, as soon as I get the pliers, pull that off, replace it with the other nut and see if that's any better. Okay, so we got that cleaned up a bit. I can get that over there. Uh, we'll put our little washer on there. We'll change out the nut. I won't worry about tightening down that tab anymore. But it won't hold anything. And we just gingerly tighten this. That's all that's needed. Now we put this back. And that. Uh, let's put a washer on there too. Put this guy. And tighten this up. All right, uh, I did rub off a spot here so I can check there between the voltage drop from there to there. Because maybe, maybe the, my voltage drop wasn't that high, but maybe it's actually between the lug and the actual copper, that's the big issue. Okay, so we got it running again. We want to be quick again, just in case. Oh, I should have been more set up. Okay, so she's still getting cooking hot. Yeah, sorry, fingers in the way and all that stuff. Yeah, we got half a volt. That's way too much. That's just gonna fry again. Way too much. So we're from the, the copper there uh, to the positive terminal. I'll cut this off before that melts. <clears throat> okay, so back to this, and we are back to getting smoking hot. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna say 200 or so. Yeah, too much glare. Um, so the issue is definitely the copper and the connection to the terminal. We're gonna have to replace that. That sucks. Okay, so to show you where we're at, what we're gonna try because again, at the moment, um, customer doesn't know how long they're gonna have the car. Uh, we'd like to kind of avoid, um, you know, doing a repair to the line. If, if we were to do a, a splice, we'd 
who knows how far we'd have to go down to make uh, a spot with good copper um, otherwise replacing the whole line you know the customer doesn't really want to go that route they just want to squeeze another year or so um, so we'll grab this stuff uh, I like this stuff quite a bit um, as well we get uh, the terminal um, the only way I find that to get these off is what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a block of wood under there put this right up against and then I use uh, a small chisel wood chisel and just kind of hammer away at it and then go on an angle and uh, you smash it open then you can get a screwdriver in there and you, you pry it off um, so you can get it off and then you can work with it then you clean the ever-living snot out of that then I got my wire wheel um, no those wire wheels are not intended for a die grinder but a uh, wear your safety glasses um, so I'll use this and eh, kind of need a new wheel soon and what I'll do once I get this off is I just spread this like a fan like that and then you pay attention to which way the wheels r rotating and if your wires are kind of like that fanned towards you then you'll want the wheel to be rotating like this you don't want it rotating like this and grabbing the, the wires and bunching them up you want to be able to kind of like you're brushing out you want to keep brushing out that way you don't do um, any damage to the wires and you just gingerly touch it uh, to clean them all uh, nice and good and once you do one side then you kind of squish it up go to another side spread it out as another fan there and just kind of keep working away around it spray it nice and good with that and then we'll go ahead and put that clamp back on um, and then see if that's any better uh, I know it's working pretty quickly before I don't know how well you caught it but when we dig dug into a spot right here where the actual copper was past past our terminal uh, I got a half of a volt voltage drop that is a lot um, especially for something that's only flowing you know tens of amps you you don't want really anything measurable maybe you know even a hundred millivolts is kind of a lot um, 100 millivolts is kind of what you'd expect between say um, the positive battery post and the post directly on the alternator at like just about full output <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do if I can get it to stay eh, can you see that um, hopefully I can get it to stay I'm gonna have this clamp yeah Maybe they'll stay there. I have that clamp on there, and I'm gonna put another clamp on here uh, as soon as I get this all set up. And then, or sorry, a clamp direct on there. And then I'm gonna go the full route of battery positive from the positive terminal all the way to the alternator and see what the full uh, voltage drop of that is. Um, keep in mind, so just from here, through this guy, through the fuse, through a terminal there, through these wires here to just about there I had half of a volt so if we can get the whole thing down to you know 100 millivolts um, we might be okay with that and then we'll just kind of monitor the, the connections there with the thermal imager make sure it doesn't get too hot um, so let me get this on uh, and nice and good and tight we'll really crimp it nice um, once you start getting into wires this thick you can't really solder them that well because it just um, you know it dissipates the heat so well you just can't dump enough heat into there quick enough you tend to make a mess of everything so um, we'll just crimp it really good and we'll go from there I'll give you a shot once I have that set up and the way. let's see if it can't get all those wires in there Show it. Hmm. No, I want 
to spread that more. Okay, so I need to spread that a little bit more. We'll get the pliers under there. Can hopefully won't break these pliers. Come on. Oh, don't break. That's tough. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think these are strong enough. No, not really. We'll try it. Do, 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 do. I just hope for the best. Worst case scenario, this doesn't work, and well, we got to replace the whole line. Well, as you can probably see, that's not beautiful, but you know what? It's crimped. Um, has a lot of copper there. It's cleaned up. So uh, let's hook it up. Let's see um, what kind of voltage drop we get. What kind of heat we get off that. Keep in mind right now the battery is pretty low. Um, so this will be uh, asking a lot of the alternator. Yeah, we'll be asking a lot of the alternators, so let me get. Yeah. Okay, so where were we? Um, so we got plugged in. Eh, it's not the nicest looking crimp. There's a couple wires there sticking up, but um, there's a lot underneath there, and the, the copper's cleaned up a fair amount. Um, we got our nut on there that's nice and tight. Um, our main cable's on. We got the lead on the main positive of the alternator which is coming all the way around to our um, multimeter let's get this out of the way so yeah we don't really want the light to fall i don't know where's a good spot hmm well go over there or somewhere um so just gonna hook up and uh, you know what i can clamp that too right there See if we can get that on there, and and where does that want to stay? Eh, probably about there. <clears throat> so we can see right now there's a zero volt voltage difference. Um, pretty easy when there's no current flowing. So we'll fire it up and see what that says. Okay, so we're ready to fire it up. We got our handy dandy thermal imager ready to go. Um, we are in park. Um, we got keys in the ignition. What I'll do, oops, not that, that's what we'll do. Come on. There we go. I'm gonna crank the wheel so that, worst case scenario, if this gets too hot too fast, I can reach through the window. I got the opening here and I can shut it off quickly. Uh, so let's go take a look to see what it looks like. Again, we're in park.
All right, what do we got? 164, that's the whole thing, straight from battery positive all the way to the alternator. So that's much better than before. And we'll see if we get any heat going on there. So if you look at our scale on the right, we're between 83 and 91. So it's not a huge difference. It's not, it's definitely not skyrocketing like it was before. And so if we can get that closer, let's see if that'll tighten up any. Well, it's definitely a lot better. I was not able to have it run this long. Um, it was getting way hotter than that uh, before. Mm, you know, obviously I would like that to be a little bit lower. So, uh, what we can do, uh, let's crank all the accessories. Um, let's full field that alternator and then see what it looks like because right now, I don't see anything that's necessarily the end of the world. So let's turn everything on and then see what happens. Okay, so we're inside, so we'll put the headlights on, we'll put the high beams on, um, we'll put the rear defrost on, uh, we'll put the blower on high, but I won't turn on AC. Oh. Huh. That sounded noisy. Hmm. Okay, so we're full fielded. We don't really know what that noise was. For a second there, it kind of had me worried that that was the alternator. Um, so we'll see if I can't get that background out of the way. So we're full fielded and maybe those are a couple degrees warmer, but it's been running so long, uh, that's not really that high. Um, and that's also not terribly high. Obviously I'd love to see that a little bit lower, uh, but keep in mind that's been running for a while. So. What if we go even crazier? Eh, turn these roasting up. Five. And five. For the sea heaters, those use a lot of juice. Okay, so at absolute max, we're at 120, 130 uh, millivolt drop for the whole way. Um, which is much better than it was with far less current. And we're at kind of a 105. Somewhere around there. Um, I'm going to turn some of this stuff down a little bit. This is, of course, uh, on the extreme side right now, especially for an idle situation. Okay, we are high again. That's not crazy warm, 170 Fahrenheit, I've seen hotter than that. Hmm. 
Well, there's a bit of warmth there, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of keep that running uh, outside and we'll see uh, if that gets any better. So that one's 105. That one's of course, or sorry, that's kind of 100 or so right on that knot. If we get this guy out of the way, that one's also about 100 or so. So that one's got a bit of warmth to her right there on that terminal. The terminal that we did is a couple degrees cooler. Of course these ones are dead, but they're not that much cooler, right? So if you look at that, that's 94, whereas that's 102. That's only eight degrees. Um, I'd love that uh, voltage drop to be lower, but really all I'm gonna do because uh, of course we can't go ahead changing everything. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have this running outside for a while and I'll check it after it's been running for half an hour and see if it's any lower, if it's any uh, better than that or if it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. But as of right now, um, for what this guy is willing to do just to keep it running for another year or so, uh, I think we should be good. Uh, and if there's any updates to this, I will let you know. Uh, but I don't believe there's really going to be so in the meantime uh, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully this helps you guys out some if this is your own vehicle uh, if you could you know yeah I, I'd try and return replace the whole lines but you know maybe if you were pull out the battery you pull out the air box you might be able to get to a good spot you kind of have to replace them with new ones you get used ones and you're gonna encounter the same kind of thing um, so, yeah, in the meantime, uh, hopefully this helps you out. And then I guess one last thing to add, um, just to kind of give you an idea of what the 150, 160 millivolts represented. Um, we got 80 amps going through that right now because again, this, this battery is pretty low. Um, so, if I can show you one last thing. See if we can't hook these up again. Yeah, da, da, human. Oh, this might be hard one-handed, but hey, oh, that's still hooked up. Let's put that in there. All right, so to kind of show you where the drops are, we got 30 millivolts drop between the battery positive and this lug right here. So just from this spot right here uh, through this terminal all the way up this wire just to right here we got 30 millivolts. Uh, then to the actual copper right here we got another 30 to 40 or so millivolts. So we got 70 millivolts from there to there. Um, and then the actual wire I'll keep you, I'm gonna go all the way to the alternator so this whole copper wire, so can you see that? Probably not. I wonder if I do that. Can you see that now? Kind of. Um, so the whole copper wire. Got another 80 or 90. So if we were to change that whole copper wire from 90, we might be able to get that down to say, I don't know, 30 or so. So instead of 160, we'd be down to about 130. So, you know, maybe we could drop another 10, get it down to 120. Um, really in the grand scheme of things, it's still not that warm. Uh, I think we're okay. I mean, I don't know if you saw it, but when we first fired it up, it was smoking. Um, so yeah, I believe, especially once this battery gets charged, um, it'll be good to go. Perfect. So, thanks for watching.